Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. It's time for another advanced hero quest painting guide. The Always Bored Never Boring club members voted on the order in which I should paint the heroes from the game, and based on the results of that vote, next up we have the elf. This is a nice enough miniature, but my least favourite of the four in the set. Nevertheless, let's see what we can do with it. First off, I have started with a spray undercoat of Ghoul Grey from Colourforge. I tend to use grey when I don't want to work from black these days. And the first thing we are going to do is the face. I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone, but I am going to mix in a little Pallid Witch Flesh to lighten it up. About 3 to 1 on the mix, maybe 4 to 1. And we are going to apply two thin coats to the face. There's no other visible skin on this model. When that's dry, we're going to use some Reichland Flesh Shade. This is going to provide all the recess shading on the face. If you follow a lot of my painting guides, you will notice I keep things very, very simple and often use the same methods. My aim is always to get stuff on the table as quickly as possible while still looking halfway decent. When the shade is dry, I'm going back to my original skin colour, thinning it with a little water and just going over the raised details a few times. And I guess while we are here, we should do the eyes. I'm going to use Ulthuan Grey first. I tend to use this for eyes because if you use a pure white, it can make the eyes look a bit too wide and staring. I'm going to thin this and carefully line in the eyes. Then it's time to crack open the secret weapon, Army Painter Speed Paint Grim Black. I'm going to use just a little dot of this in each eye for the pupils. And I tend to find that if you try to put the pupils in the middle of the eyes, your miniatures often look like they are staring. So I usually try to make them look to one side. In this case, our elf is looking off to his left, which goes with the flow of movement in the sculpt. That will do, I think. Next, we're doing the hair. We're going to try to do a sort of blonde that isn't too yellow, and I'm adapting a scheme I saw in an old Games Workshop painting video. The base colour is Zandri Dust. If you're working from a dark base coat, you may need two coats here. I can get away with one over this grey. It will be fine. And when it's dry, we're going to switch to Skeleton Bone. You can use Yushabti Bone for this if you want, maybe even Screaming Skull. And we want to use this to highlight the raised strands of hair. You can do this by dry brushing if you want, but I'm thinning the paint and using a sort of sketchy, haphazard approach to lining in the details. Then I'm going to grab some Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to wash over the hair. This will darken it down, add the recess shading and help to blend the highlights. If you want to, you can then go back and do more highlighting. Guess what? I ain't gonna. I want to move on to the tunic now. My warrior was mainly blue, my dwarf was red, naturally the elf is going to be green. I'm using army painter green skin, if you have some citadel greens, use those instead, they will probably be better. And again, thin the paint, apply two coats. I'm actually going to apply three coats because army painter green skin doesn't have great coverage, and as there is a lot of green on this miniature, I want it to look good. When those coats are completely dry, I'm going to apply a green tone from army painter. This will shade the tunic while enriching the green rather than making it look grubby, which can happen if you use brown tones. Then I'm going to go back to green skin and use it really thinly to start almost glazing the tunic. And I'm using Lamian Medium here so I can get a good glaze that I can still control well without it running all over the place. I want to focus on the raised details for highlighting, trying to blend it nicely into the darker recesses. I'm then going to gradually add a little goblin green so I can work more and more on the raised areas for brighter highlighting. As I said, the tunic is a big part of this miniature, so I wanted to spend a little extra attention on it. Still, I don't want it to get too bright, and this is what I ended up with. It was at this moment that I realised this miniature has a bit of a Power Rangers look about it. But we press on, we're going to do the leggings and sleeves now. For the leggings, I'm going for Mournfang Brown. It's a really nice, rich brown, and I'm going for brown partly to continue the leafy woodland motif I started with the tunic, but also because I'm doing the boots in grey. For the sleeves, I'm going for Zandri Dust. It's just a nice pale beige sort of colour that I really like, and I wanted something lighter for the arms. We will shade all that, but while it's drying, I'm just switching to Dryad Bark, mainly because I don't use it a whole lot, and I'm going to use it now to paint the handle of the little knife on the elf's belt. Next, I think it's time we rolled out the Old Faithful, Agrax Earthshade. We're going to apply this to the sleeves, the leggings, and that little knife. Agrax is, of course, liquid talent. It makes anything look halfway decent, and it's going to do all that recess shading for us. Once that's completely dry, we're going to do a quick highlight, just going back with the same base colours to paint the raised details. So, Mornfang on the legs, 
Zandri dust on the sleeves, making sure we are keeping our paint thin. And then dryad bark on the knife handle. Now for the boots, the gloves and the quiver around the back. I'm going to use Dawnstone. I love Dawnstone, it's a really nice mid-grey, and when you drop a little non oil on it, you get an easy soft leather effect. It's one of my go-tos for belts normally, but I want to use it a lot more here. So next the non oil goes on. We're going to do a pretty heavy wash here to make sure we get good recess shading in all of the folds and creases. And don't forget the quiver on the back. I nearly did. When that's completely dry, we're going to go back with our thin down Dawnstone. As I said before, I use a lot of the same processes in my painting, and a common fallback is to base coat something, put on a shade, and then highlight again with the same base coat. For a lot of things, that's good enough for me, because I just want to get things to the table quickly. But for a lot of people, that will be the kicking off point, and they will gradually add a lighter colour to their paint mix, building up the highlights, like I did on the tunic. So, you know, if you want to take your highlights further, go for it. But I'm moving on. Next I'm using my favourite metallic colour, Balthazar Gold. I'm going to use this for the belt, the brooch on the left shoulder, the hilt of the sword, the two little button details on the front of the boots, and the small clasp or insignia on the quiver on the back. One coat should be enough, even thinning the paint down to ensure a nice smooth finish. And of course we want to shade and weather that gold, so I'm going to use some Seraphim Sepia. The yellowy tinge to the Seraphim Sepia will help to retain the glistening gold look while still providing recess shading. And then you can go back and highlight that when the Seraphim Sepia is dry, once again using Balthazar Gold. If I want a really bold cartoony style, I actually highlight with something like Retributor Armour instead. Then we switch to Lead Belcher for the Sword Blade and the Knife Blade, which is the last of the metal on this miniature. We want to shade it, and Nuln Oil is my preference for shading lead belcher. Just make sure it doesn't pool around the hilt of the sword or run onto the green tunic, because Nuln Oil is very dark and it will leave a blotchy mess on your paintwork. Finally, we can go back with lead belcher to do a little highlighting, and at this point, we only have the arrows and the bow left. When I was a wee lad some 30 odd years ago, I used to paint elven bows completely white and then I would put little blue bands around the top and the bottom of them. I'm not sure why, I suspect I saw a paint scheme like that at some point and liked it. I'm not doing that today though. Today, I'm going to replace my water because I've been using metallic paint, and then I'm going to start with a base coat of Zandri dust. This is going to go over the bow itself and also the shafts of the arrows. I'm now quickly switching to Ulthu and Grey and I'm going to coat the fletching on the arrows. One quick coat will do it, and then we need to do some shading. I'm starting with Seraphim Sepia. I'm putting this all over the bow. When that's dry, I'm switching to Reichland Flesh Shade, and I'm going to put this on the bow starting at the end, and working about three quarters of the way along each end towards the hand. And when that's completely dry, I'm cracking out the Agrax Earthshade. This is going to go on the top quarter to a half of each end of the bow, so we get a transition through the shades. I'm also going to put it over the arrow shafts and fletching. And at that point, I'm calling it done. Obviously, I still need to do the base, but I've got a separate video on my channel going through the basing process in detail, so I'm not going to repeat that here. And that is that! Thank you to all of the Always Bored Never Boring Club members who voted to determine the order I paint these heroes, and thank you everyone for taking some of your valuable time to listen to me today. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.